I'm at the Auburn Avenue Research Library on African American History and Culture in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm sitting here uh, with Ms. Mims. Ms. Mims, uh, could you give me your full name, please? Good afternoon. I am Gloria Initial J. Mims. And uh, how long have you been in Atlanta? I've been in Atlanta now a few decades. Uh, as a matter of fact, I remained here after uh, graduate school of uh, 79. Okay, what's your favorite food to eat? I grew up in uh, a home, a family, a community where foods were a necessity, not only necessity, but um, uh, to enjoy, uh, to share with others, to um, make that kind of statement to say that in spite of, of, of such uh, sim the simplicity of foods was really admired and appreciated because something could always be made out of nothing coming from the tradition of our culture whereby something very simple, very ordinary uh, could then be made into a full meal to serve not only the members of the family, uh, but those who would come in to stop by to visit, and even for those to carry home to share with their family members who may have been unable to visit with us. Okay, that's a great segue. Uh, we are working uh, on a documentary that examines soul food and civil rights, and what you just stated about you know your favorite food and making something out of nothing uh, is at the heart of a lot of the work that we've been doing. Um, in talking earlier and in our previous conversations, you made reference to numerous restaurants that were very active uh, during the civil rights movement here in Atlanta, Georgia. Can you make reference of those? Yes, well, when I came to Atlanta graduate school in uh, 1973, I made it uh, one of my priorities, in addition to my studies, to get to know and uh, about the various um, African American restaurants, about whatever name may have been uh, mm -hmm. re referenced during that time, uh, black restaurants. And um, to my amazement, they were all right near the campus of the Atlanta University. Mm -hmm. And so for those who uh, had to walk, then it was very close in proximity. Mm -hmm. Additionally, uh, they were located on, at that time, historic Hunter Street. Mm -hmm. And uh, therefore, it was this sense of, of history, sense of saying, I'm here in Atlanta, uh, I want to get to know as much about what it has to offer, and certainly starting with the foods as sustenance, right. then that would then uh, be a carryover uh, with strength, if you right. will, of to uh, enjoy other things. Okay. And as a result of that, then Frasier Cafe was one of the restaurants that I and other students and others got to um, uh, frequent. Additionally, since uh, earlier the conversation was about if I could mention the Association of the Study of African American Life and right. History, there were times when a few of the meetings were, were held there yes. during um, in preparations local arrangements. And so um, it was always such a great warm feeling to walk in that restaurant and to meet Mrs. Frazier because she was like the hostess. Mm -hmm. She's such a genteel, warm, kind person. Okay. And as it would be observed, seemingly when it came to students, mm -hmm. the entrepreneurs along the, uh, along the street well, all, always had an affinity for us because they knew then that we were um, quote unquote struggling financial right. students and so <clears throat> excuse me to always get that you know, extra generous serving of something okay. was always uh, very very helpful and, right. and thankful for that 
and so I have very fond member, memories of, uh, of that. Can you tell us what was unique about Frazier's, uh, Frazier's Cafe Society? What was unique about the ambiance? I mean, was it different than a past schools? Or? It was similar to Pascals because, again, it was one of those places that uh, where uh, there were those who would, would frequent both. Mm -hmm. There were some who may have, uh, not that I was there at all times of the day, because mm -hmm. most of the times um, I uh, would be there either for lunch, late lunch, after having left class, mm -hmm. or in the evenings. Whereas sometimes then I was able to get to Pascal's, since you mentioned Pascal's, mm -hmm. earlier for breakfast or late breakfast. And so then it was a matter of seeing different, yet similar mm -hmm. individuals who would have, as I said, frequented both of those, both of those restaurants. Okay. In terms of... Um and one of the things that we, we have here is we have some primary source documentation uh, from the Auburn Avenue Research Library. And I want to I want to say something about the Auburn Avenue Research Library. Um, the Auburn Avenue Research Library uh, on African American history and culture culture and history of, of um, excuse me of African American culture and history is uh, a library that is similar to the Schomburg Center in New York City in Harlem of New York City the Blair Colwell Library in Denver, Colorado. Um, and um, uh, there's, a, there's a library in South Florida in Broward County that focuses on, um, on African American life and history. And as Ms. Mims made mention of, uh, much of this has been fostered through a major uh, organization called the Association for the Study of African American Life and History. And so it champions and disseminates uh, the history of African descended people. And so what we have here from the Auburn Avenue Research Library are primary sources that sh demonstrate the kind of people that would come to Frazier's Cafe Society in order to hold meetings. And we see a lot of civil rights activity at this point. What we'll do is we're going to start, we're going to start with the 1962 um, appointment book. And as we flip through this, uh, there is a lot of information that we see. These are primary source documents. So, uh, and, and what that means is that it's not. This is not knowledge that has been passed down or told to someone. This is the actual um, resource to where we can create historical narratives. Um, as we kind of flip through this, I mean, you begin to see different uh, persons. Miss um, Clemens uh, from the Clemens family, uh, very well known family here. Uh, in Atlanta. Um, there are a couple of different things um, in the Graham Jackson room that took place. Uh, some of the things that I, I did write down here is in June of 1963, which would be this book, uh, we see Dr. Benjamin Mays, Benjamin Elijah Mays, um, that hosted the Negro College Fund. And so this is where he would raise money. Um, and we'll, we'll do shots of that. Uh, a little bit later. October 18, 1963, we see the African Students Union. Um, there is a book here, the 1980 book. We see uh, on January 6, 1980, we see the Institute of the Black World, mm -hmm. which was an organization that was much like a black think tank that was supported by the city government in, in Atlanta during the time uh, when Maynard Jackson was mayor to kind of look at different issues that impacted black America and, and the diaspora. Um, there are meetings with the Republican Party. Uh, and what's particularly interesting about this time is in between 1932 and 1960 is where we see African Americans shift from the Republican Party or the party of Lincoln, which was a very different party than what we understand today, to the Democratic Party, and part of it was because of Franklin Delano Roosevelt's New Deal, and though it had problems, it did a lot for African Americans. But on the, the other side of it is once John Kennedy is elected president, and African Americans supported John Kennedy, who was a white ethnic, who had been through similar kinds of discrimination, we begin to see African Americans kind of move towards the Democratic Party. and so. Um, the Republican Party still have somewhat of a mainstay in this. Here, 
uh, if we get a shot on January 25th, Thursday, January 25th, 1962, we have the Atlanta Negro Voters League uh, that has a party of 50. Uh, the party starts, it seems, at 10.30. Uh, Ms. Mims, do you, um, were you familiar with the Atlanta Negro Voter League, or should I? Uh, I got to know about it once I came to Atlanta, okay. because that predates Yes. Okay. So <laughs> the Atlanta Negro Voters League um, was an organization that was founded by John Wesley Dobbs, who was the grand uh, master of the, at the time, considered to be the Negro Masonic Order. So he's the highest ranking, ranking um, Mason in all of Georgia, black Mason in all of Georgia. He, he, he founds this with A.T. Walden, who was one of the f most prominent black attorneys at the time and did some work um, in the city. And they found the Atlanta Negro Voters League in 1946 uh, as a way to really galvanize the black vote. And so what's particularly interesting is it's founded as a Republican organization, the Party of Lincoln. But if we move about 20 years from that point, we see the protégés of attorney A.T. Walden, who would be Leroy Johnson, mm -hmm. and the protégé of John Wesley Dobbs, uh, who would be his grandson, Maynard Holbrook Jackson Jr., we see them run as Democrats. And so what we begin to see is this kind of shift in black political thought in terms of some different things. So uh, we see them here. Um, something else of note that, I, 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 that is important is in July of 1962, and I am going to find this July. So, we have Roy Wilkins of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, the NAACP, who holds a meeting Down. here. And so, and the, the menu reads, um, so this is on Tuesday, July 3rd, 1962, the menu reads, fruit cocktail, a rib roast dinner, uh, fresh fried corn, broccoli and cheese, um, and it was, it seemed to be $3.75 a person. Uh, so, it, so you get this understanding of the kind of civil rights activity. Is this something you want to say? Oh, I just thought it was uh, very interesting because um, this precedes, uh, quote unquote, Independence Day, July, right. July yes. 4th. That's right. And so to have the NAACP meeting the day prior to that, it would be interesting to, uh, as I say, to have been the fly on the wall right. to, to hear what conversations took place. Right. Yeah, so that was interesting. Right next to this, uh, so, so then they open it up some more, so this would be barbecue chicken, so this is the day before Independence Day, um, cabbage, potato chips. Um, see paper plates so we get all of this information here and as Ms. Mims stated to be a fly on the wall to understand the kind of activity that's been organized when the United States is celebrating its Independence Day but still at this time you know it, there were certain citizens deemed as second-class citizens in the United States it's very powerful as to what the organization was working on in order to advance the rights of people this is the brother, Bronner Brothers here. And the Bronner Brothers were extremely instrumental in hair products and beautification products coming out of Atlanta. Uh, also, the, found, uh, the founder of the Bronner Brothers Corporation, who was the father and mother, um, were ministers. And at this point in time, in 2016, there are numerous members of the Bronner family that are ministers as such. Um, but here they're having a party of 18. And it will be at 7 o'clock on January 17th, uh, Wednesday, January 17th, 1962. Now, what's particularly interesting about this is this is 1962. At this point in time in our history, we associate this time of the year with Dr. Martin Luther King holiday. But because it's 1962, it precedes the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King. And so uh, here in this menu, you have um, fried chicken, Spanish rice, French beans, rolls, coffee, and apple pie, and it was to be hosted in the Graham Jackson room. 
And so a lot of what the Bronner brothers did was they raised money for members of Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, uh, the, the Atlanta student um, movement activists, uh, those that would be, you know, and, and put in holding cells and, and, and different things. And if I might add to this, Ronald Brothers had uh, one of his um, businesses right there on Hunter Street as well. Okay. On the, the right side near, uh, it was closer to, at that time would have been Ashby. Okay. Ashby and, and, and Hunter okay. Street. Right. Ms. Bims, in, in an earlier conversation you referenced um, Busy Bees. Yes. And you referenced yes. Um, Canopy Castle. The, the Canopy Council. Can, uh, Ca Canopy Castle. Okay, can, um, can you talk about them as well in terms of their uh, of student activity and, or being close to the Atlanta University Center? Yes, well, um, Canopy Castle was owned by um, Scott Simmons' uh, husband. And it was one of the, again, similar to the other two restaurants mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, Pascal's and, and Fraser Cafe. A lot of students um, ate there, organizations, because again, I'm, I'm remembering um, all, some organizations that met downstairs, uh, the, the lower part mm -hmm. of, the, of, 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 of the restaurant, it's more similar to downstairs of the Fraser. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. uh, uh, cafe. So there were those who would we would walk in and we could recognize some of the the local uh, politicians mm -hmm. or the local uh, ones that in recognizing faces. Um, and it it also a lot of uh, uh, individuals who came to Atlanta whether they were considered tourists or those who had family members. Um, very cr crowded, especially during the time of graduations. Well, all, all four of them mm -hmm. during graduations, um, uh, times of family reunions. Mm -hmm. So all kinds of, these restaurants were on a historic street. Mm -hmm which meant then that for those who knew about Atlanta, this is where they came. That's right. It was prior to going to other areas north of that area. Mm -hmm. And so one, there were times when one would have to wait X number of minutes in order to be served, right. simply because of the, 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 the number of customers there. And so um, to segue on to Busy Bee, mm -hmm. even though it is a, a, a small uh, restaurant compared to maybe the size of, of the original Pascals, or even uh, when it came to uh, the other two, mm -hmm. Fraser Cafe and Canopy Castle. However, even to this day, I mean, <laughs> it remains crowded. It remains one That's of the right. favorite places. Right. And they are those who have gotten to know about it from other countries, right. and there are times when you walk in there and have to stand for a while or wait to be seated, and you look around and you see various ethnicities. Mm -hmm. So again, it's, it's that food, um, uh, the ambience, even though the, 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 the smallness, if you will, of the physical space, yet to see the different ones coming and going um, for what they order as food, mm -hmm. sitting there or standing, observing them, enjoying the food, carrying on conversations, not only uh, with the ones with whom they've come, however, they're interacting with the staff and all beyond ordering. Mm -hmm. And so to this day, mm -hmm. it still has a very, High prominence within within the within the neighborhood within the area right. of Atlanta, and so for that reason, um, it is important, that's, I that's believe, really to 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 include as well, if possible. 
one of the things I want to make note of is that Frazier's uh, Cafe Society was located at 880 West Hunter Street. That is currently Martin Luther King uh, Drive. Um, going towards the Atlanta University Center, so it borders Atlanta University Center, but most of those establishments were located in that same area, and it would be it, it would be irresponsible for us to not help understand how the Atlanta University Center schools uh, and the areas that surrounded it, you know, areas such as English Avenue and Vine City, um, how all of them came together and the business community. So you have the political activism and, or, or the grassroots activism of the people of Atlanta. You have the, the think tanks of the Atlanta University Center schools and you also have the business community that all come together mm -hmm. and and really plot to disengage white supremacy on numerous levels over food. Mm 